Good morning, guys. It's Jaeger262, and welcome back to Armored Warfare. Now, I apologize, there hasn't been a lot of content I've been making. I've been grinding missions in both Armored Warfare and World of Tanks, as well as I have some pretty big moves happening in my life and trying to get ready to move to New Jersey right now. So, not a lot of time to make videos, but I thought I'd make this one to show you guys this and just some progress that I've made. So as you can see, this is the Age of Rage skin, one of the 3D skins you can get with the missions for the Warrior. And the reason I'm showing you this one, I have the one for the T90 as well, is just because it's got little wine bottles, and I think that's cute. Also, something I wasn't sure about, but now know, is that you do get the banners. You don't need to actually pay the 9,000 gold to unlock banners to use them for these skins. Uh, some other features of it that I enjoy is this rug. And the gas mask, which was somewhere. There it is. Oh, two of them. Where the headlights are. And then there's like other cool stuff. It's a 3D style. And we are everywhere. I don't know. That's part of the lore for the Moscow calling thing. Um, I think. I know Age of Rage and the seasons aren't technically tied together. But I have no idea where the lore for that comes from. But so you can see it. Looks pretty great. Um, I'll quickly show you the T91, if it'll let me, there we go. So same thing basically, has a rug in the back and we are everywhere on the side, but no wine bottles, so kind of disappointing. A lot more gas masks to make up for it, but otherwise normal. And the reason I'm doing this is because that means I've successfully completed at least two of the three. I am still working on the Centauro one, the one four six, right now for that. There's 48 days left, but I'm still only at rank 20. And the reason I bring that up is because, at least for me, I wanted to get to the BWP 2000, rank 30. And I thought a huge part of that would be completing those missions, getting battle coins through various missions. As you just saw there, you can complete daily missions, which is what I'm doing now. You get these each day, 2,500, 1,500, and then 125 for the lowest one. But the bulk of it, like I told you in my previous video, I thought was going to come from doing these missions here. And I made a statement like, um, even if you do all three and then unlock this one well you don't get battle coins for doing this one actually so never mind but if you unlock all three you still won't be able to do the entire battle path and I still believe that's true I think that I can complete the Centauro skin mission and it would only take me as far as maybe 23 and that would be it so the only other way to really generate enough battle coins to do this would be to, and the only reason I'm saying this video is because I know in my previous video on this I said it was impossible. Um, it's not impossible obviously, but what I meant by that was to get to, at least for me, the BWP, I'm going to have to get those coins in battle using either the battle boosters, which gives you about four to 500 battle coins a game if you're playing at tier eight or above, which is nice. But I'm going to have to do that a bunch of times or just really grind and play for hours and hours a day for the next 48 days to actually get this. And the reason I say that is because they designed it this way to address players' concerns that the last battle path was too grindy, requiring 13 hours of gameplay for close to 90 days straight. But I feel like they didn't actually solve any of the problems because this is going to be just as grindy now just to get to 10 levels up. And the only real way to make any progress, just like the last one, is of course through the boosters or through buying said boosters and buying um, battle coins with gold, which the prices are, well, not that steep considering that's as much as a cosmetic change <laughs> is 10,000 gold. But still, not cheap, kind of crazy. Um, and 
don't want to say that it's going to be only pay to play, but in my opinion, now that I've completed the bulk of the battle coin missions, I think it's just as grindy as the first one, but we will see. However, thank you so much for listening to that mini rant. That's not what this video is about. This video is a news video for Armored Warfare because there are some pretty good things coming to this game after the Antis, which is something that I really wanted. Well, now I'm getting even more of the things that I want, what I hope a lot of other players will. So we're going to jump over to the articles and see what I mean. Alrighty, so first vehicle I want to talk about is the second upcoming Oscar Faraday vehicle. If you remember my new story from last week, we are getting new American light tanks. And they're, they were hoping to add one of the Griffin projects at Tier 10 or Tier 9. And I was talking about how I hope they put in both at Tier 9 and Tier 10. But we'll see what happens. The next vehicle, right after the Sprut, is going to be the M113 Hellfire. And the reason I wanted to do with this story, along with the new story that just came out today, together, is because we are getting a lot of new vehicles to Armored Warfare in really great ways at least for me personally now i've talked about the m113 for a long time it's this big blocky chassis of a vehicle it started out as an american apc during the vietnam war you know it as the m13 ag have in the game at tier 3 with the recoilless rifle and i've been wanting an in between at least tier 6 or 7 vehicle that had the improved tow missile launcher which was the m901 hammerhead which is the same exact launcher used by the C-13 TAU. And since they're really trying to expand the Oscar Faraday line, which also has the NM-142, which uses the same chassis. Forgot about that vehicle for a little bit, but the NM-142 uses this same chassis, and it's on the Oscar Faraday line at Tier 7. I'm hoping it gets a counterpart for the M-901 Hammerhead. However... This will be the Tier 9 installment. It is an ATGM vehicle, but the ATGMs it uses are the famed Hellfire air to surface missiles, which makes it a little awkward to play. They say it's going to play the AFT 10, the Chinese Tier 10 premium tank destroyer, but we'll see. The good news is because of that, we are going to get two types of missiles which is just the stock normal one gets 950 millimeters of penetration which is great you can upgrade it to the agm 114f for 1300 millimeters of penetration and then finally we get the agm 114n thermobaric and recently introduced as part of an additional vehicle progression similar to that of the recently introduced french vehicles so I guess that's just an, a special ammunition you'll need to get after unlocking the first two and unlocking everything else as like a special retrofit. Either way, thermobaric missiles, for those of you who don't remember, those are the missiles that are used by the Terminator BMPT series of vehicles in the game. The Russian Tier 8 and Tier 9 tank destroyers. They're kind of weird. They're not really great. Um... But they do give you increased chance of fire, and they're great at destroying modules, so take it with a grain of salt. But this is just a really cool vehicle I can't wait to see in the game. I really love the M113 chassis, and I really love ATGM tank destroyers, so it's going to be great to see the Oscar Faraday tech tree built up with this. But this goes hand in hand with this article on DVOD, which was the American Anti-Aircraft Arming Division during the Cold War. It stands for Division Air Defense. It was a program developed to find vehicles to compete with the Russian ZSU-23-4 Shikla, which is perhaps the most famous self-propelled anti-aircraft platform in the world. Unfortunately, there's no confirmation that we're actually going to see this particular SPGAA in the game, but as you know, I'm a big fan of SPGAAs, and right now we only have the AMX-13 DCA, which is a bummer. I love that vehicle, 
but I wish we had more. And I was saying, I really hope the Oscar Faraday line gets something unique like that. And while this hasn't been confirmed for the Oscar Faraday line like the Hellfire has, I don't see them building up any other tech trees because they're not going to introduce any new dealers or nations in Update 3.0. I assume that the SPG AA is going to go to Oscar Faraday. Now, you get a quick history here of all the famous and most prominent examples of American anti-aircraft artillery going into the Cold War, starting with the M16 from World War II, which was a famous motor carriage, and the M3 half-track was actually used to house a bunch more different um, anti-aircraft options, not just the quad 50 caliber. And I'm still hoping that we get an M3 variant of some kind, be it American or Israeli in the game, but I don't think that's going to happen. It walks you through the M19, the M42, which was the Vietnam era one, both had 40 millimeter cannons. The Vigil Anti, which had this crazy huge rotary cannon, which is nice. The M163, which is the 20 millimeter Vulcan, absolutely devastating, and I really hope we see this at tier 5. Because not only would it compete well against the AMX 13 and the VBL, but that 20 millimeter cannon is a monster. And I think it'd be nice to just have more M113 vehicles. There's the MI-72. Not something I want to see. That would be crazy weird to play with. Um, it's CA-1 Cheetah, which was an American development for a foreign country. For the Dutch. That's right, for the Dutch. It was basically the American version of the Flak Panzer Gepard, which... I hope we see in the game at some point, but I doubt that we will. And just walk you through a couple of other ones leading to the Sergeant York, that big SPGAA platform that I said I had really wanted for a long time. Well, I think it's confirmed because the whole article is about that, but all that they really say is that one or more of these vehicles will be in the game. I have no idea what tier this would be. I'm guessing maybe seven or eight. These are two 40 millimeter cannons. But we are, at least my prediction is, we are definitely getting the Sergeant York, which is based on the M48 chassis, as you can see here, in the game for update 3.0. However, I don't know which of the other vehicles we'll get. And the reason I wanted to do those two things together is because I'm really hoping it's the M163. While there's a lot of other better options even on this list than this one, I think it would be nice to see both of these SPG AAs come in to the game but we'll see how it goes the only downside i had to this article is that they're only confirming things from dvod so everything like the flak panzer gepard the italian automatic the shikla the tagunska i don't think any of those are going to be in the game or at least they're not in development right now but i would really love to see foreign spgaa guns as well However, I'm just happy that we're finally getting any new additions to this new kind of AFV support vehicle role, and I'll take all the ones that I can get. Very excited to see what happens, and very happy that we're getting at least the Sergeant York and the M113 Hellfire, if nothing else. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you enjoy news episodes on Armored Warfare, if you just enjoy watching my videos. It goes a long way to support the channel. Let me know what you guys want to see more of. Or subscribe to the channel if you want to get updates on any other Armored Warfare videos that I'm doing. But thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time.